Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 1984 Minnesota State High School Hockey Tournament. Now, tonight we begin our exclusive four-day coverage here on WCCO Television with a half-hour preview show. I'm Mark Rosen with my colleague Ralph John Fritz coming to you from Sports Central right here at the St. Paul Civic Center. And Ralph, as I mentioned at the top of the show, as you look at the eight teams, there's really no clear-cut favorite, even though defending champion Hill Murray is back. Well, there's a lot of talk, Mark, about Hibbing being number one. They've been number one most of the year. And Hill Murray, of course, lost two games. They lost to White Bear Lake, and they also lost to St. Paul Johnson. They avenged those defeats, and of course, their first game is against Johnson. So maybe Hill Murray, the defending champion, says, hey, there's a lot for us to prove in this thing. You know, recall Last year, Hill Murray coach Terry Skrypuk said uh, we were like a machine one year ago. Well, the memories are still fresh. Uh, the Pioneers capped their dreamlike unbeaten season with a dramatic 4-3 to three victory over Burnsville. Now, let's go back to the final thrilling seconds as Don Chevrier and Lou Nanny call the play-by-play. -play. Surely, around the right side, 25 seconds down. That Burnsville goal is yawning wide open. It's been called. The offside has been waved. Play going right on. Ten seconds left. Nobody in that net. There's the time remaining. Time running out on the Braves. Good four checking for the Pioneers. Surely in behind. One second. It is all over. And the Hill Murray Pioneers are the state high school hockey champions of 83. And a very deserving champion they are, Don. They are undefeated. They played extremely well. They fought off a very tough Burnsville hockey team, scoring late in the game to win 4-3. A tremendously excited and proud bunch of guys, and they should be. Well, of course, uh, Hill Murray has lost a few players from that tournament team, but uh, they have some excellent players back, and they'll be out to prove, that, as we said earlier, that they can do it again. Have some great matchups tomorrow, Ralph. We'll be getting to those in just a little bit. Uh, as I mentioned, you and I will be coming to you from the uh, Sports Central for the entire tournament. Now, calling the play-by-play -play for us again will be Paul Brown. We'll hear from Paul just a little bit later. Uh, Don Chevrier had another commitment, but we're very pleased to have the call. Also call play-by-play -play, Chris Cuthbert from Canada, one of the top announcers in Canada. Now, handling the color will be, once again, Lou Nanny, the North Stars general manager, and Doug Woog, fresh from the U.S. Olympic team. So they'll all be with us in the coming days here on Channel 4. And in just a moment, we're going to be back to see how those eight teams did get here to the uh, state tournament as we continue on Hockey Preview 84. Stay with us. Dodge Daytona, Daytona Turbo, Daytona Turbo Z, cars that will revolutionize your perspective of the American road. Standard 550 protection, fuel injected, front wheel drive, and two models turbocharged. The revolutionary Daytonas from Dodge, the American road will never look the same again. We are Dodge, and America's revolution. Dear Republic Airlines, like most account managers, I'd be lost without my appointment book. So when I lost it, your mechanic in Chicago, Joe O'Renick, not only found my book, he called my office to say he found it, then returned it with a note that said, thanks for flying Republic, we'd like to serve you again soon. You will, Republic, you will. Every year, Republic gets thousands of letters that really say the same thing. Nobody serves our Republic like Republic. Thinking about how to pay for college? Think TCF. TCF offers college loans for students and parents at below market rates. If you're a Minnesota resident, you can get a student loan to attend any college anywhere in the world. Or your parents can get the loan regardless of their income. So now every family, TCF customer or not, can get a low rate college loan at TCF. Class dismissed. Hey, don't you wish every class was this short? The good thing about advertising in the newspaper is that your ad gets delivered right to your customer's door. The bad thing about advertising in the newspaper is that that may be right where it stays. When people are ready to buy, 80% of them go straight to the yellow pages. So let your ad do the talking where their fingers do the walking.
There are no less than 149 teams playing high school hockey in Minnesota. Of course, we're now down to the final eight. Every one of those eight hoping to walk away with the championship hardware on Saturday night in the championship game. It all starts at noon tomorrow when Edina faces off against Rozo. And, of course, together they will be making their 44th tournament appearance. Mark Rosen and I took a look at the tournament matchups. What has made these teams so successful? Dedicated coaches, for one, and a feeder system where youngsters develop skills beyond their age. It gives a coach like Ikela more options, and it shows in their power play and penalty killing. Rozo has a solid program, but in the overall picture, they lack in numbers. With an enrollment of 303, they're easily the smallest school in the tourney. Head coach Hokinson has less to choose from. That affects team depth. However, a strong first line is anchored by Paul Broughton and David Drone, who scored three goals in his section final. The defense sets up well. Goalie Don Johnson is outstanding. What Rozo lacks in numbers, they make up in aggressiveness. No coach has more tournament appearances than Willard Eichela. He wants to make his 16th the sweetest, despite the lack of superstars. This team here hasn't been really heavily recruited. Uh, about two or three boys uh, uh, have been recruited by Division I schools, so we don't have a lot of uh, so-called blue chippers like some of the teams we had in the past. The specialty teams may make the difference. Paul Ranheim and Greg Dornbach had a potent power play. The Hornets possess depth and quickness. You recall the story of David and Goliath? In this confrontation, Hibbing will try and dodge the slings and arrows of Apollo decided underdogs looking for its fortune. However, Hibbing combines the best of both offense and defense. Apollo has made good strides under Ed Zins, but their first tourney appearance could be a rude awakening. The first line headed by Mike Hiltner fares well. The seniors score the Eagles winning goal in their overtime sectional final. Ken Carlson leads a very big experienced defense. In hockey jargon, Hibbing plays firm. The defense, however conservative, can hit and does. Led by number seven, Nick Andrikin, the offense moves fluidly. The Blue Jackets have reached heavenly heights, and it has Coach Olsen sounding like the guru of ice. This is where the body separates from the soul, and you're in that transcendent feeling. Andrikin also has the feeling, but put it in simpler terms. We're going to do our talking right down on that state tournament ice. We made it, we worked hard, and we're going to do it. Unlike the early sessions, the evening offers teams quite familiar with each other. What impressed us most about Kennedy was their ability to change styles, adjusting their rhythm to the ebb and flow of the game. The Eagles own the worst record in the tournament, but they're out of the competitive Lake South, where they met Burnsville twice, splitting that season series. The Braves' offensive catalyst is Todd Skine, their leading scorer, who echoed his team's thoughts. It's nice to be back, boy. After last year, it's nice to come back. Maybe we can go one more step further. At times, intimidation is the name of Burnsville's game. They hit and hit again. No one is safe, including anyone who ventures into the crease, where goalie Andy Luckcraft heads an excellent team defense whose goals against is less than two. It could come down to the goaltenders, where Kennedy's Jeff Mees has tried to make a comeback after breaking his ankle earlier this year. If the Eagles want the party to continue, they'll have to take advantage of every scoring opportunity a stingy Burnsville gives them. The final game of the day is a real St. Paul bash. If absence makes the heart grow fonder, Johnson will love this tournament, their first appearance in 13 years. If there's going to be a high-scoring game, our guess is this is it. Hill Murray has the capability of matching Johnson goal for goal. The team split their season series. Todd Norman is the Pioneers leader and top scorer. What a great effort here for number six in the sectional final. To his line mate Tony Corella, nothing beats experience. It seems like every time tournament time comes around, playoffs, things like that, we just, something happens. We just, you know, we, we've been there before. We know how it is and we always want to get back. Number 12, Dewey Wallen is the driving force behind Johnson's bid to return to tournament greatness. He leads all scorers with 50 goals. It helps when your defensemen are converted forwards. Then they move the puck with authority. Coach Rod Magnuson has done an excellent job adapting the team concept to his player's ability. 
Thank you very much, Ralph. Now, with me now, near the penalty box here at the St. Paul Civic Center is Doug Woog, a longtime coach at the South St. Paul High School, who this year was an assistant coach with the U.S. Olympic team. And Doug, of course, will be working with us throughout the next couple of days here on Channel 4. I'd like to get your thoughts on the overall field, Doug, as we stand right now. Well, we've watched these teams practice, all eight of them, and they all skate very well. Uh, Mark, I think it's going to be a very balanced tournament with uh, many good skaters and many good players. It's very difficult to pick a favorite to, or one top team. They all look very good. Let's start with the first game, Rozo against Edina. That's a rematch of the Consolation Championship last year. Edina had their way in that one. I think you'll see a little bit different game this time around? Well, I think both teams are going to be fresh versus playing the third game in three days. I think this will be an advantage for Rosso, which may be just a little bit less in, in depth. I think you'll see contrasting styles. Edina uh, might play, uh, I believe, a more conservative defensive game, and Rosso will probably go and attack and, and aggressively forecheck and probably pinch their defenseman and try to keep the puck in. So we see two different styles and, and two great teams. I had a chance to watch Hibbing play uh, last week. They've been ranked number one most of the year. They'll be coming down here playing the Cinderella team, St. Cloud Apollo. Yeah, that'll be an interesting game. Uh, Hibbing has a very balanced attack, uh, four junior defensemen, where Apollo's playing four senior defensemen. I think the strength of Hibbing will be in their balance and their overall speed, whereas Apollo will rely on uh, three players, really two defensemen, uh, Ken Carlson and John Mandal, and also Mike Hilton are up front. So it'll be really a little more bulk in terms of, of Apollo with a little more speed in Hibbing. Really a contrast in games in the evening session. We got Burnsville against Kennedy, the Lake South in the first one, defensive teams, and then we got Hill Murray and Johnson, offensive teams in the set in the last game. I think that's exactly correct. You have two teams that play real solid disciplined defense in Kennedy and also the uh, their opponent uh, uh, who am I missing here? <laughs> <laughs> <It's all right. laughs> We've seen so many games, yeah. <laughs> We've seen so many of them, but uh, the two teams that are competing there are going to be both uh, Burnsville and, and the Eagles. Kennedy are going to be both sound defensively and play very well in the net. And then you come back with the second game in the evening with really two major contrasting styles in the tournament uh, opening round. That's Johnson, which uses nine forwards flying all over the place, and uh, <laughs> uh, Hill Murray, which will play a little bit more up and down, straight up and uh, play a little more discipline on their position. So uh, it's a great, uh, great day for Aggie. Doug, we've talked about five or six different people here, coaches, assistant coaches, scouts today. We asked them, who do you think is going to win the tournament? I think we got about five or six different answers. You come down to talent, there's not much difference. I think you mentioned two major factors, luck and emotion really play a big role at the high school level. Well, yeah, I wouldn't like to make any money trying to bet on who's going to win this thing, and it's a little bit easier to, to watch and then decide the second day who won the first day and, and the third day to see who won the second day and then maybe pick the final pick the last night. But I don't know who would win. I don't think anybody has a definite opinion. Uh, there are many good teams, and like you say, luck and emotion are going to be big factors. This is usually the team with the hot goaltender end up winning this tournament. Well, it certainly helps. Uh, you have to have them at the right time. There are many good goaltenders in this tournament. I think uh, each of the team has uh, very good goaltending. Some of them have superb goaltending. We'll look forward to your comments uh, throughout the next three days here. Well, I'm looking forward to it also. Doug Wu, who will be helping us here. We'll, we'll return in just a moment with a report on the hockey fever in Roseau, Minnesota, right here on Hockey Preview 84. Metallic by Micron, truly the ultimate flexible hockey skate with the guaranteed fit. Available at General Sports Edina and Liskey Hut and Sporting Goods Wyzetta. Miami, the Metzgers are in my Orlando. Oh, Isn't it oh, funny how wonderful. often you hear from so friends beautiful. vacationing in warm places oh, when you're God. stuck Look in a cold Phoenix. place? Las Vegas. Now there's an exciting place. Da, 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 Republic da, da. Airlines <laughs> flies to more warm places from Florida to California than any other airline. We have a warm spot for you, too. Focus on Republic. What have I done? Nobody serves a Republic like Republic. Banks just love to give away toasters. But if you're reinvesting certificate money this month, TCF thinks you deserve more, like RCA TVs, Panasonic stereo tape recorders, Olivetti typewriters, and more. 20 big gifts, your choice, free with a qualifying deposit in a 30-month certificate. TCF 30-month certificates, high guaranteed rates, and more than just a toaster. In investments, it is the quality of knowledge, service, and expertise that makes Merrill Lynch Merrill Lynch. So isn't it reassuring to find the same professionalism at Merrill Lynch Realty? 
Today's real estate market requires the kind of thoughtful guidance we put into the delicate nuances of financing and value to provide you with an unparalleled sense of security. Talk to the people at Merrill Lynch Realty and see why we are the Merrill Lynch of Realtors. Rozo has made a habit of winning the Section 8 championship. As a matter of fact, this year, the Rams are making a record 24th appearance. For uh, a lot of the hometown fans, they take it for granted. But for the students and players, each tournament has a very special meaning. Downtown Rozo was relatively quiet the day after the Rams beat Bemidji 4-3 for the Section 8 title and a record 24th appearance in the State High School Hockey Tournament. For many of the town's adults, it has become almost routine. Well, it's an exciting thing. You expect Rozo to win because they, uh, they have gone so many times in the past. They're expected to do it. They expect themselves to do it when they get older, and so we, we kind of come to feel that they are going to. But for many of the players and students, a Section 8 victory means the thrill and excitement of a first trip to the city. Preparations begin with shopping on Main Street for that special item, as the celebrating continues at Jake's Pizza Parlor. We're gonna win. Winning hockey in Rozo is a tradition shared by all generations. I played in the state hockey tournament in 1958 and 59. We were state champs those two years. And now my son, Kirby, has to be number 17. He played last year and this year both, so it's 25 years after that he gets a chance to play in the tournament. It's kind of exciting for me. And Rams coach Gary Hokinson remembers last year's loss to Edina in the consolation final. Edina, we owe them one, and uh, I would sure like to, to settle a score sometime and get a chance back at them. Maybe this is our opportunity. Well, they'll get that opportunity beginning at noon tomorrow right here on Channel 4. Well, you know, planning for the broadcast of Hockey 84 began in earnest last November, and since then, more than 100 Channel 4 staffers have been working to make it the best possible coverage. Well, here's a behind-the-scenes look at our crew at the Civic Center. The first thing you notice at the CCO Sports Complex is the cable, miles of it, that runs in all directions and connects seemingly countless forms of electronic gear and even people. This is cameraman Ron Hines doing his impression of the Bionic Man. The cable ties together what may be the best hockey production setup ever assembled. At the heart is a 45-foot remote truck where two and a half million dollars worth of electronic gear awaits the opening face-off. Channel 4 leased it from a Chicago firm. The truck, plus 12 cameras covering action on the rink, adds up to a setup superior to the network hockey coverage in Sarajevo. As important as the equipment is the human factor. Well, last year, you know, all of us were, uh, our first year, a little bit nervous about doing it. We were all inexperienced in it. This year, I think all of us are enormously excited. We have one year under our belt. Uh, we're out to make this year an even better tournament. Uh, and we are literally sparing no expense or people power to do that. And uh, I'm enormously excited, and I think everybody working on it is. Thank you. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 1984... It is 8.45 Tuesday night. With the tournament less than 40 hours away, it is time to see if the hard work will pay off. Minneapolis Southwest and Hopkins have agreed to play a practice game to allow our crew some practice for the tourney. Through the evening, everyone becomes more familiar with the buttons and gizmos under the pressure of a real game situation. After the game, there's an informal post-mortem outside another trailer, nicknamed the White House. With last year's experience, this year's improvements, and ongoing enthusiasm, they plan to make one of the great high school sports spectacles into a major television event. I had no idea there was so much involved. <laughs> I'm nervous now. Well, we have three more days to look forward to. we got a great crew here. Yes, indeed we do. And we'll be back with more of Hockey Preview 84 right after these words.